So I started a catering company and everything went to shit. What's up guys? Welcome back to another sit down video. If this is your first time tuning in, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below to subscribe to more juicy content from one. So for this video, I want to make sure that you guys have all the information for you to make sure you don't make the same mistakes I made and the things you should avoid when starting a business. So get your notepad and your pens and let's get started. Now, story time, story time. The first thing you need to know is I started my catering company in January of 2019. I'll give you the backstory on everything that happened, why I wanted to start the business in the first place and what made me eventually Put a pause on that now before i even decided to even start a catering company the first thing i loved about my niche was i loved branding or well, the first thing i loved about business is branding i love helping people create a look or a feel for their business and i love the creativity i saw in people's food industries abroad and I wanted to bring that creativity to Nigeria. What was the perfect example to use this creativity? My catering company. Part of this event that I attended, I made sure that I posted some of them on my Instagram page to more or less create awareness towards the grand finale which was the GT Bank Food and Drink Festival. Leading towards the first exhibition, I had no idea what to purchase for my business. I was more about the aesthetics of my brand rather than actually making profit. Let me tell you why. I loved the facade I created. I had this fancy um, smoothie cups. I made sure that my brand, my logo was top notch. I made sure that everything I wanted down to the bags that were carrying the smoothies and the food packs everything had to be unique and that was what i focused on now for my first exhibition i got to my venue i hadn't tested most of my material before some of the materials i bought personally was like a blender cutlery my cups my plates things that i borrowed from my mom's kitchen were um, an oven or a microwave or an oven i borrowed her grill i borrowed some appliances and i did not test them up until my first exhibition and imagine my surprise when you tell people you're making smoothies and your blender doesn't work so I had to convert it into fruits in a cup so I'd already diced the fruits all I had to do was blend it and put it in a cup but because my blender wasn't working I had to get creative which was me going to convert my smoothies into fruits in a cup and pouring whipped cream at the top which ended up being the best seller. I actually sold out. My point is, I did not test my equipment for my first show and that sort of made me derail from how much I was supposed to make initially. Leading up until the grand finale, the GC Bank Food and Drink Festival, GC Bank Food Fair is like the major food fair platform here in Nigeria and I had to get there. Mind you, I had just started in January of 2019. So I had to build some sort of, you know, image of my business on my social media platform. So I was attending every possible food fair that was out there from January to March, just to make sure that I got my brand out there. I attended the Mente de Moda Fair. I attended the Giddy Fest um, festival and I attended one more other um, fair before the GT Bank for the Drink Festival. Now on the days leading to this festival I had zero, like zero staff except for my chef. Yes guys, zero staff. So I started to reach out to a lot of people that use certain hire for rents or whatever they call those guys that only work for specific events. I got a contact from one of my friends and she recommended two guys to me. I interviewed them and they were good to go. So I told them, you know what? Show up on the day. They were supposed to resume by 6 a.m. of the GT Bank Food and Drink Festival morning to help the chef prepare his um, meals and to make sure that we were at the venue on time. We had to be at the venue set up by 10 a.m. Let's get to the horrific part. So the morning of the event, I had my chef call me by like 5.30, 6 a.m. 
and he comes to tell me oh you know he needs assistance with the cooking like I expected so I'm helping him I'm rushing to do everything I need to do and while I'm doing that it's six o'clock and the other staff haven't called me they haven't texted me mind you one of the staff that I hired was supposed to pick up my serving dishes from another company I rented it from I don't know why I just didn't have the equipment he was supposed to pick up the dishes from that company in Yaba in Lagos and bring them to my house to make sure that we had everything on deck. We would fill up the car when we were done cooking and we'll go straight to the event. So the guy came in by like 6.30, 6.40. Because he's not a chef, I didn't want to flip out. I'm like, you know what? You know, start helping the chef out. Make sure that you're doing everything that needs to be done to get this thing going. And the other staff hadn't come. He told me he was on his way. Seven o'clock comes, he's not here. 7.30 comes, he's not here. By the time I start calling him, he's turned off his phone. And I'm like, wow, really? So I start looking for a replacement. I'm calling my mom, I'm crying to my mom. I'm like, this is what I've been waiting for. This is the event I've been waiting for to jumpstart my business. And my mom's like, you know what? I'll call someone that helps me out in the store. My mom owns a store, by the way. So she gets one of her staff to come to help me out. Guess what happens next? My other staff, the one that came with the serving dishes, surprisingly gets a call and tells me, oh, he's supposed to go and play football for one company in um, Teslin Balogun Stadium, located in Surulere in Lagos. And he's like, oh, he needs to play today. He's gonna get some sort of championship or it's a championship game or something like that. And I'm looking at him like, I'm paying you for your time. You're telling me you have to go and play ball. He's like, yeah, that's his passion. That's his dream. He needs to go now. And I'm like, okay, so what happens? How do I get a replacement? He's like, he doesn't know what's going to happen, but he needs to leave. In fact, he's starting to give me an attitude and I'm like, God, is the earth or is the universe working against me right now? Like, I need to catch a break. Would you believe he left? Like, I had zero staff and while this is going my chef surprisingly starts to misuse some ingredients and we run out of certain ingredients guys i start to drive around ikui and vi looking for corn for cheese for whipped cream for like a ton of other ingredients and i am losing my mind at some point i think i got to one supermarket and they didn't have whipped cream or cheese and I stay in the car and I start crying. This was probably maybe 9 o'clock, 8.30, 9 o'clock and I start crying and I'm like, God, what happened? How did everything go so wrong? What am I doing wrong? How did this happen? What can I do to save my catering gig? And then the universe answers me. My mom calls me and tells me, you know what? I will drop everything I'm doing today and I will assist you. My best friend also calls me and he's like, what are you doing? I will assist you. He comes, he takes everything off and he starts helping me out. Everything eventually works out in my favor. My mom helps out in the kitchen. My best friend comes to help out in the kitchen and we surprisingly, by some miracle, get to the venue by 10 o'clock. Now we made a huge amount of sale that day but we were working for two days so my day was Saturday and Sunday and some other company had Monday and Tuesday so I did this for Saturday and I did this for Sunday it was exhausting I don't want to give excuses and say that oh I didn't foresee me burning out but I legit burnt out I had no idea how stressful catering for two days was. I had no idea how stressful going to the market to buy everything was, but this was why I decided to stop my business. I saw that my persona isn't the kind of person that likes to be rugged and goes to the market and has to deal with vendors and has to deal with distributors and suppliers and has to deal with you know, marketing and running your business and making sure that you make enough money to attend or pay for different fairs and events. It was all too much for me. Aside this, I had a proper 
nine to five job. On Saturday and Sunday, while I was done, Monday morning, I was back in the office. It wasn't feasible. I was burnt out, I was tired that entire week. And I was like, you know, this can't work. I need to figure out what I need to do. And I was like, let me take a break on this biggest mistake. I ended up not going back into catering because of that mental stress of what's gonna happen when my staff bail on me and what's gonna happen when I cannot meet up with clients or meet up with deadlines. Now on to the second part of the video, which is things not to do with starting a business. The first thing I'll tell you, based off my experience, is to not start a business without the right team. So for my business, I felt like I probably selected the right chef, but not the right waiters. I did not choose people that I could trust or I could depend on, and that in the long run made me feel like I couldn't handle that business. Basically, I didn't have the proper structure for hiring the right waiters and the right you know, people to help me out in my business. So if you are starting a business, make sure you have the right team that understand your business's values and will make sure that they are there for your business in the long run. The next point is to make sure that you're starting with the right equipment. Remember when I said my blender wasn't working and my oven slash microwave wasn't just doing the right thing? You need to make sure that you had everything checked out before going for your first event. If I had a proper rundown with my team and myself and say, oh, let's make sure everything is used or done properly, or let's have a rehearsal before going for the main event, I probably would have realized that my blender wasn't working. But you need to make sure that you have the right equipment to get your business going so you don't have or make mistakes like I did. Another thing you should not do when starting your business is doing everything by yourself. I am guilty of this. I have an issue delegating tasks to people. Till today, I have an issue telling people, do this this way, do this this way, do this that way. And it ends up coming to bite me in the ass. Now, when it got to me hiring staff, I probably could have gotten better staff. I like being organized, I like things being organized in a certain way, and that took a toll on my business. I wanted to handle every single detail of the business, except for the cooking part, and I did not have a proper manager to handle everything. So it fell on me, I made a mistake, I didn't have the right quantities for certain things, and it ended up, like I said, biting me in the ass. So if you are running or starting a business, please, delegate tasks. You cannot run a business by yourself. You need help, you need people's help, especially when you're running a catering company. The next thing is to not spend money on irrelevant things. What do I mean by spending money on irrelevant things? You need to avoid spending money on things that are not necessary. For example, when I went for my first fair, I was more concerned about the fancy plates and the fancy cups and the fancy paper towels and the fancy straws that I forgot to focus on the essential things like making sure my blender was working. You need to focus or channel your money or your expenses towards the right things like making sure your equipment is good, making sure you hire good staff, making sure that you're marketing and putting your money where it should be allocated to like marketing, like advertisement, like sales, putting your money in the right things that will enable your business to grow. Another thing you should avoid when starting a business is not understanding your industry or your market or your target consumers. Starting a catering business, I started a gourmet business. I knew who my clients were. I knew the types of people that would like um, shepherd's pie, that would like lasagna, I knew the kind of market or the kind of clientele that would like hot dogs, mini burgers, basically stuff that are easy to eat. I knew who my clientele were, but if you don't know who your clientele are and you're making basic food or you're making the wrong food for the right crowd, you're gonna have issues. For example, if you watch Gilmore Girls, there was an episode where Suki was talking about making food for a kid's party and she was making proper, bougie meals or gourmet food for kids. You cannot make lasagna or 
make fusilli or pasta or stuff like that for kids. Kids like things like mini burgers, like fries, like hot dogs. So you need to make sure that you understand the market you're trying to sell the food or the goods. Now the next thing you should not do or avoid when starting a business. Do not spend money from your business. Do not spend your profits and be like, okay, I got money now. I gotta blow it here, here, here. No, I am a victim of this. The moment I make money, I wipe it out. So avoid spending your business's money for personal reasons. And the last thing to avoid when starting a business, do not get financial aid too early. What do I mean by this? Now, for some of the businesses I've started, I had people or agencies or companies reach out to me and say, oh, I like your brand. Would you be open to collecting a certain amount from us to grow your business or grow your brand? Any business owner will probably hop on that. The one thing you don't want to do is get money from these guys and then you're paying back the loan and you're not seeing your revenue or your profits. Instead, the little revenue or the little profit that you're making from starting that business is going to that company. So you're not going to make money. It doesn't make any sense. Don't be too quick to get credit from these companies. Make sure that you've built your brand to a certain level or at least have some sort of expertise to understand how to run your business before collecting credits from those companies. My takeaway for this video is for you to understand that for my catering business, I wasn't consistent with my business. I wasn't reaching out to clients for deals or for gigs. I wasn't consistent with my staff. I, I think I've even lost my chef's phone number. But I wasn't consistent with my staff. I wasn't consistent with anything. And that took a toll on my business. Before I knew it, I couldn't go back. Although some people are telling me that, look, you can actually pick up from where you left off, but it's a lot of work. I don't want to go into something and be in between. I'm not figuring out what I'm going to do next. I need to find out what the next thing is. There's my story, guys. I hope it's enlightened or help someone out there if you have any comments on this or any ideas about other things you can avoid when starting a business leave a comment down below or send me an email letting me know what you think and i will definitely respond until then don't forget to hit the subscribe button join the community and keep watching bye guys